So what we have is a pair of greaves. First greave is already bent up and curved. The second greave is still in flat form with uh, indications for where the bends need to be. But the problem we're facing is that the first greave actually limits range of motion at the ankle. So squatting and kneeling cuts into the top tendons of the foot. And so the first inch needs to be trimmed off of the sheet metal. And we're going to walk through how to correct the grieve pattern before the flat section is bent up. Okay, so we've clamped our greave in the vise with soft jaws. We're going to measure an inch and a half offset with the combination square and then scribe that to the surface of the greave so that it can be cut off with a hacksaw. So that offset is just being transferred with the combination square on the entire perimeter. So we're mostly cut through to the point where the hacksaw is binding at two small points here and here. We can finish out our cut with the hacksaw, but just know there's enough deflection to where the sheet metal is trying to grab the hacksaw. So these little points here and at the edge are very hard to extract, but it's important to keep this clean so we can transfer over to the master template. So we'll switch back to the hacksaw and trim out this last section. So once you get it to this stage, You can just bend it off, like so. So we're going to flatten this section out and transfer that over to the master template. Okay, so we're going to take our curved piece and then flatten it back out. Just work it over the horn to open it up a bit. And on the anvil face. And then flip it over to pull this radius back out. Now we can take our master template and put our original part on it, like so, making sure that the holes line up. So if we see light passing through, we're good. And then, just take the time to transfer your line work, okay? And you're going to do a little bit of smoothing of the edges, right? Rounding of the curves, and that's done by eye. This gives you a fairly good idea of where you want to trim it. And it's must, much faster to do in flat sheet metal than it is to do when it's curved. A 
at this point, we're going to finish out laying out our rails so we know where our bends are. What we did was just measure the tape and subdivide it for each of the bends. So the center line is this middle fold of the tape. And then, because each tape piece was measured to the length of the material, and then subdivided the same number, we get the right taper for each cross section to do a uniform bend. And the shin is much more uniform than the forearm when it comes to taper and contouring. So, I'm just going to transfer those lines across. And now we do have to take the time to make sure that we have made location sites for the holes that we are going to cut off. Because this greave is too long and the holes were already drilled around the perimeter, it's important to make sure that the two holes, which are just to the edge of the line, are transferred high up and still match the hole pattern that we see from the original drawing. Okay, so there will be a hole drilled on the left flank and a hole drilled on the right flank, right next to the two holes here. So next we're going to trim off our section on the bottom here, lining up our cut. And then these details here will be trimmed off on the Beverly chair. So we're going to take our marked edge. We're going to cut with the Beverly shear. Just trim off that curve so it's nice and uniform, like so. Follow that same radius on the other side. We get it to bite first. That's the hard part. And then just gently pull that same edge up. So now the material edge is ready to be filed smooth. Okay, so now the work gets clamped to the table, and then the drill press gets brought over to the two holes we need to drill to replace. We just bring the drill bit down to where we think our dot should be, and once it's seated, we'll lock the slider and the arc adjustment on the drill press. Turn the machine on, cut it down, wait until we see chip formation. That's when we want the whole grate, we can add our lubricant. Finish the hole, cut the machine off, and then again adjust the arc and slider to touch down where we want that hole to be. Like so. Locking the slider and the arc adjustment one more time. Turn the machine on. Add our lubricant. And that's it. Okay, so now that our lines are measured out, we're going to bend the inside of the lines on the pan brake and it is time to remove the tape so it does not get permanently attached to everything on our master template. So there we go. We're going to line it up dead center. And we're going to start with the center line first and then we're going to work our way to the outer edge 
on the pan there. Okay? So just a shallow bend to start. And then incrementally as we move closer and closer to the edge, the bends get more dramatic angle. And this is as we go for a bracer or a greave or any flat, straight, bony section you're trying to protect. Same principle applies. You're just trying to create a C shape to encapsulate that bone. And then again, final bend. So we have something that would fit the leg as you sight down the material. We have a curve, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, line it up. Then further. And the last one, again, you're worried about contact, so you can only bend so far as the pan brake will allow. Which is why we start in the middle of the armor. So now we got to do a fit check. And you can see when we put it on, although it fits, it does not contour well which means there needs to be more bend in the center line and less bend at the calf line. But we do have full range of motion when crouching, which is the whole point. So, now we're going to add some contouring. Like a C-shape, that's going to close it. And then, we're going to open this line up. And then check the fit and repeat until contour. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to get the contouring on the flare once the greave itself fits the leg. So you can see we've got just a straight up C-shaped tube and then with the flare. So this is the, this is, this is the right outside, this is the left outside, the left is flared, the right needs flaring. So you want to take advantage of the horn, holding your material up at a steep angle like so. It does not show up well on the camera, so we'll rotate so that we have something a little more appropriate. So we're holding it at that angle and then hammering. Right up top. As that happens, it's going to open the curve. Okay. The other way to do the same process is to switch to a round face hammer on the edge of the anvil, like so. And both will work fine. So you have a curve that looks like this on the side. Okay, so when you get to these corner points for an aesthetic and you want to get them to flare, you need to find a good, soft, radius corner 
on the edge of your handle. Sometimes that's the heel, but more often it's near the cutting table. And all I do is I come and I bring that edge up to the point, roll the hammer over the edge, and then on the cutting table side, same thing. You can sometimes get away with this with the horn, but there's not as much control. The squared off edge of the anvil face itself is going to give you a lot more control if it's clean enough and smooth enough so that you get a nice clean line here. And then at that point, you can pull that tip out to a point or leave it flared with the contour that you'd like.